Hello and welcome to the second session of our webinar series on Facebook as a research tool. It's great to see many people back um, and uh, we have another packed uh, session for you focusing on how to recruit research participants through Facebook advertisement. And in this particular session, we're focusing on targeting and the particular content of your advertisement to create more or less representative samples. So to kind of uh, just show you what we're doing, so I will just very briefly go over a short introduction again about uh, why we think using Facebook as a research tool is a good idea. Uh, then I could will um, focus quite a bit on how to use Facebook targeting. Um, and then I will present uh, also some research we've done on uh, advertisement content. And we will have some time in the end for Q&A. Uh, so in the meantime, please do use the Q&A uh, function. Um, the chat didn't work very well last week, so it is better to use the Q&A function instead of the chat for questions as we then can um, if, you know, follow much better specific questions. Uh, I should also point out that the same as last week, we are recording this session and we will make the video as well as the slides available after the session on our website and you find the link here, but you will also get an automatic email from us once we have uploaded everything. So do not worry if you feel like, you know, it's going a bit fast and you cannot fully, uh, you know, kind of if implement what we're teaching you here, you will have the recording and once you're ready to set up your Facebook campaign and advertisement and so on to start your research project, just use the recording and kind of go stop and play uh, based on your own uh, timing. Okay, so moving forward, uh, just, you know, maybe not everyone was here last week, so I will very briefly go over this again. Why we think using Facebook for research is a good idea. Um, we think that, and we have used Facebook uh, to recruit participants for our survey research um, now multiple times in many different countries around the world um, and have had a very positive experience, which is also the motivation of why we're doing this. And what we're using it for is really to directly gather information from Facebook users. And the advantage here is that you have access to a lot of um, in people that use these platforms on a very regular basis. And you might want to use it to run a survey to gather some information about what people in your country think about the topic you're studying, right? Of course, this is a convenient sample and we need to be careful with, you know, how representative the sample is. But we will very much focus on what can we do? How can we use the Facebook tools that are available to us to the best um, in, in order to get at least close to getting a representative sample. What we're also doing a lot is we're conducting survey experiments, which are quite popular in the social sciences. Um, and here, representativeness is less of an issue. We're more worried about internal validity. And then it is less of an issue kind of whether you really have a fully representative sample, right? Other people have also used um, Facebook to gather information more indirectly about users, so extracting data using the API about public posts, social links, these kind of things. This is not something we're covering in this uh, webinar series, but we are actually thinking about putting on additional sessions in the future, so we might get back to this. And then we have actually one session that focuses more directly on how can we use the platform to intervene directly. So running a field experiment on the platform and then seeing how this plays out maybe in the real world. And that will be the last session in two weeks. So the advantages of using Facebook for these kind of research project is that you have actually direct and easy access to a lot of people. And this directness we think is a, is a real advantage because there is no survey company in between you and your data, right? You are setting it up directly, which is a real advantage. And hopefully with you know, this session and, next, and, um, and last week's session, you will see that it is relatively easy to set up a, a Facebook ad campaign to use it for data collection. 
What we also shown you already last week is that the cost for running a survey or doing like a survey experiment on Facebook is incredibly low. So we showed you like some comparison um, of how much it costs uh, to have a completed survey um, using this tool. And here, you know, just for comparison, uh, we run a similar survey in the UK um, at the same time as we did a Facebook survey. Uh, with a commercial uh, survey company and the cost was so incredibly, you know, like much, much higher. Um, and so this is a real opportunity for people who don't have as much research funding um, to, to also still do some really exciting research. Uh, so thirdly, uh, the advantage of using Facebook for these kind of purposes is that you can reach typically hard to reach populations or very specific groups. And Today, we're actually showing you an example of this uh, when we're talking about ad content, where we were focusing on, on a particular group. Next week, we have a whole session that really focuses on these hard to reach populations, because that's really a, a big advantage of using Facebook here. And then lastly, it's just a global reach, right? Facebook has nearly 3 billion active users, which means that in most countries in the world, in, um, you have millions and millions of Facebook users that you can tap into and potentially recruit to your research, which is much, much more than any of these more commercial companies like MTurk or the Qualtrics pool or any of the commercial companies have. Um, and also, it's just different countries. Yeah, we have so much focus now research on Western countries, more developed countries. And we believe that using Facebook is a real opportunity to also go outside that world. So just very quick reminder for those of you who haven't been here last week. Uh, so when you know we're focusing in this session and, and kind of um, uh, our research on using Facebook as a platform to recruit research participants. So what does that mean? How does that work? What you have to do is, you know, these simple steps here. You first do need a, research, a Facebook account and a so-called Facebook page, which is, you know, not every, like individuals that just use Facebook as users wouldn't usually have that, but it's really easy to set up. And we did cover that in our first session. Secondly, you need to add purchase advertising space on Facebook. We see advertisements all the time, uh, commercial uh, companies, but also NGOs, governments, they use this kind of tool of, of purchasing advertisement on Facebook to reach people. You then run your ad um, and then basically users self-select into clicking on your ad or not. What then happens is we don't like direct people towards like buy our product, we direct them towards our survey platform we're using. We use Qualtrics, but there's other um, uh, survey platforms out there uh, that you might be using. And then basically, once you have them on your platform in your survey, the participants just do the task you want them to do, whether this is a an experiment or just collecting information. You could even kind of, you know, like just recruit people to maybe do some qualitative research. That is then up to you. What we are focusing on today, sorry, just, uh, is really kind of purchasing advertisement, how to set this up, how to optimize running your ads and so on, uh, because we do have that self-selection element in there. So I will stop here and hand over to Aikut, who will now talk about uh, Facebook targeting. Yes, thank you very much. Okay, uh, in the rest of this session, in my part, I will first go through, uh, cover some issues from the last session, which will be important to follow, to understand what we will do in this session. And then I will discuss what are some challenges to create representative samples on Facebook. And finally, we will start working on actually using those tools, targeting tools, I will share results from one of our studies in which we actually use these tools. Okay. So on the screen, you see Facebook Advertisement Manager. This is where you go to do most of the actions you will be doing, most of steps that you will need to take if you want to create advertisements on Facebook. It is grouped, it is under Facebook Business Manager. You can reach uh, this page, Facebook Advertisement Manager, also through uh, this URL link. 
you see a green create button on the left. Once you click on that button, an, an easy setup tool will be opened. And that setup tool will take you through the process of creating an advertisement. All of your advertisements, all of the advertisements you create will be listed on this page. Um, on screen, you see various performance metrics. Once you create your advertisement, you will be able to watch the performance of your ad, how many people clicked on your ad, how many conversions you have, what is the budget. Uh, you will be able to watch all of these performance metrics uh, in real time through this page. The most important thing you need to know about Facebook Advertisement Manager is its hierarchical structure. It's formed of three levels. If you want to create advertisements on Facebook, you go through three levels. These are campaign level, ad set level, and ads level. Now, these three levels are organized in a hierarchical way. What I mean is that once you choose a campaign, then you make choice set ad set level, and you can create more than one ad set. And under each ad set, for each ad set, you can create more than one advertisement. This hierarchical structure in which ads are located under ad sets and ad sets are located under campaign is designed to facilitate optimization, better use of optimization tools of Facebook. Facebook will just in that way assign budgets and, and uh, advertisements in the way that works best uh, for you. Okay, now if we take a closer look at decisions that you will make at each of these levels, first at the campaign level, you will choose campaign objectives. Last week, we discussed this in detail. There are three uh, campaign objectives, three main groups of campaign objectives, conversion, traffic, and reach. And based on these campaign objectives, Facebook will uh, offer you alternatives of optimization algorithms. You can ask Facebook to maximize number of people who will complete your survey. You can ask people people if you are using a traffic campaign objectives you can ask facebook to maximize the number of people who will click on your ad or you can ask facebook to maximize the number of people who will see your ad our research as anya has presented last week has shown that using conversion works best in our case uh, we can by using conversion we can maximize the number of survey completions now, to use conversion campaign objective, you need to first set up conversion infrastructure. Very importantly, you need to do it only once. Once you set up conversion infrastructure, that is, you create a code that will transfer data between Facebook and your web page, then uh, you can just go and create your advertisements. We will not need to go, to, we will not go through these processes today because of time limitations, but you can go and check our slides and recording. In addition to these, if our resources are not enough, you can just go and check online resources. There are tons of online resources on YouTube, for example. This is because commercial advertisers also follow these same steps to set up a conversion infrastructure. Now, once you make choices at the campaign level, once you choose which campaign objective you will lose, you will use, then you need to go to ad set level. This is the level at which you choose the audience, budget, and schedule of your advertisement campaign. And it is especially important for the part of this session in which we will discuss targeting because targeting occurs at the ad set level. And finally, you go to ad level, and this is the level at which you actually create advertisements. I mean, that's the level at which you pick the image and you write the text you create the advertisement that Facebook users will see. Anya will discuss this uh, part after, after I complete my part uh, in this session. Again, to return back, this, this, will be, this should be the structure of Facebook Advertisement Manager campaign that you are creating. You can create more than one ad set, uh, just having all having different audiences, budgets, and schedule. And under each ad set, you can create more than one ad each having different content. Okay, now having, having gone through a very brief review of the last week, let's focus on our goal this week. We want to create a sample that will be as representative as possible of a broad population. 
And as Anya has just said, you might also want to reach hard to reach groups, recruit migrants and so on. These will be discussed next week. This week, we will be focusing on creating as representative as possible of a broad population, such as voters in the UK. Now, of course, this goal will be limited. Your efforts to reach this goal will be limited with the boundaries of online sampling. Not everyone is on internet, not everyone has internet access, and not everyone is on Facebook. Now, accepting these limitations, we should still get good enough samples, given that Facebook has millions of users across all countries. On the other hand, when you look at some of the samples recruited through Facebook, what you see is that the researcher has basically come up with a very imbalanced sample. Why? How, how Facebook ends up creating very imbalanced samples, although it has millions of users. Now, there are two challenges that you will need to deal with, you need to overcome if you want to use Facebook for your research, uh, for representative samples. First of all is the good old self-selection bias, which is common to all online opt-in survey designs, opt-in survey uh, strategies. Certain group of Facebook users will just be more interested in your advertisement. Your advertisement content, the image that you use, the text, will just be more appealing to some group of Facebook users. In addition to this, there is also a second bias when you try to advertise recruit through Facebook, that is Facebook's optimization algorithm bias. Facebook will deliver your advertisement to groups of people who are more likely to take action about them. Take action means converting or clicking based on what your campaign objective is. Now, what is this optimization algorithm bias? Let's delve into detail more, it's important. When you publish your advertisement on Facebook, you just created your advertisement, you published it. It will go through a learning phase, which equals 50 conversion events or 50 traffic events. During this process, right after you published your advertisement, Facebook will broadly deliver your advertisement. It will show it to, to a wide range of people, and it will just try to understand which groups of people are more likely to click on your ad. And this, is, this will just take Facebook 50, 50 events. At the end of 50 events, Facebook will have developed an algorithm that predict who is more likely, which people are more likely to click on your, inter, your advertisements. And after that, it will start delivering your advertisement primarily towards those people. Now, this is good for advertisers because Facebook is helping them to, to basically find people who are more interested in their uh, products. For us, for researchers, it creates a trade-off, however. It will decrease costs. Facebook's optimization algorithm will decrease costs because it increases now uh, efficiency, but also it will lead to more homogeneous samples. That is the thing we will need to tackle with. So for example, let's see a sample. We had shown this sample last week as well. This is a sample from the UK in which we didn't use any targets. Old people, people who are over 55, formed 92% of our sample, despite, of course, being millions of younger and middle-aged people in the, in the UK. That is the problem. Now, how to overcome these challenges, how to create more representative, more balanced samples? There are two things that you can do. First of all, you can create advertisements that will appeal to broader sections of population. If more people like your advertisement across all groups, more people will click on it, your samples will get better. Anya will discuss this in the second part of the session when she discusses advertisement content. A second thing that you can do is to use targeting tools on Facebook. And this is what I will be discussing in the remaining part of uh, this my part in this session. Now, how does targeting work? How, how do targeting tools work on Facebook? First of all, Facebook offers a wide range of targeting options for your advertisement campaigns. We can group these targeting options into two categories. First, there are standard targets. These are age, gender, and location. These are standard in the sense that they are available in all countries. They are very precise. They are based on 
these targets are based on data entered by users themselves. And once you make these choices, you, once you set these targets, Facebook closely follows whatever target you have set. There is also detailed targeting option. In this case, a very wide range, education, political targets, hobbies, and interests. These are mostly derived from user actions on Facebook, like likes, for example, page likes, comments, and so on. They are less precise, and Facebook tells you that it can ignore these targets if it ignoring targets will increase performance of your ad set. Now, these targeting choices, very importantly, are available at the level of ad set. And again, each ad set, at each ad set, you have to create, you have to choose an audience for that ad set, you have to choose an budget. Now, bringing these two points together, first one and second one, brings us to the gist of advertising uh, or, or targeting for representative samples on Facebook. What basically you are doing is creating separate ad sets, each having a separate target, target audience, each having a separate budget. You ensure that people from different groups, groups that you target, are represented in your sample. You need to create different ad sets with separate targets so that you will ensure that all of these people are represented. You ensure that Facebook's optimization algorithm does not intervene to shift all of your budget to a certain demographic group. This is the main idea. So let's, let's just do an example to get even better picture. Let's assume that you are very unhappy about older people representing forming 92% of your sample, and you want younger and older people to have equal representation in your sample. What you need to do is to go and create two separate ad sets. The first ad set will only target younger Facebook users. Uh, it will have its own budget. It will have its own schedule. The second ad set, on the other hand, will only target older Facebook users. Again, it will have its own budget. It will have its own schedule. Now, what you do is to keep these ad sets open until you reach your targeted number of participants across both age groups. Once you publish your ad sets, your advertisements, you can follow how many people uh, just click on your ad and you can follow from Facebook how many conversion events you have completed, you have received, how many people completed your survey. You will be able to reach this data on Facebook Advertisement Manager. Also, you can go to Qualtrics and you can basically check how many young people and how many old people you have in your Qualtrics survey in your data. And based on that data, you can decide when to close one of your ad sets. Let's say you have already reached 500 older people, which was your target anyway. You will just close your ad set targeting older people while keeping the other ad sets which targets younger people open. Alternatively, you can adjust budget accordingly. So you have realized that since, since ad sets have different budgets, right? Uh, since budget is selected separately across ad sets, you have realized that you recruit more, a higher number of older people. What you need to do is to go back to Facebook and adjust the budget. You can decrease the budget, daily budget of uh, ad set targeting older people and increase daily budget of ad set targeting younger people to again reach a more uh, balanced uh, distribution of younger and older people in your sample. Here you see an example structure. Under the campaign, you have two separate ad sets. And for each ad set, because of hierarchical structure of Facebook, again, you have to create an ad. Since we don't, uh, we can just use the same ad across each ad set. We located each ad, the ad, the advertisement under each ad set. Uh, so I hope at this point it is clear. Now there are a couple issues to to uh, just cover before we go to practice station. 
First of all, as I have just said, equal budget doesn't ensure equal number of respondents. Uh, you can still, if there's a selection bias, if older people are more likely to click on your ad, you will still get more higher number of older people Then you need to adjust your budget accordingly. Facebook doesn't always deliver what it promises. Age, gender, and location are more successful than other targets. But for example, you might still get college uh, graduates, although you mainly target non-college uh, non -college voters. So in other categories, in education, for example, Facebook, be, Facebook might be more uh, imprecise, less successful. And finally, using targets might increase costs. It is because as you use more targets, Facebook will find less space to uh, use its algorithm and create cost efficiency. Now, I will now share results from a study we conducted in three countries, UK, Turkey, and Spain. We want to see how various ways of using these targets affect sample composition and sample size. And we want to decide what's the best way to use targeting tools. In this campaign, in this study, we use three, we set three targets. Three, uh, we use targets at the level of age, at age categories, gender categories, and education categories. For age, we picked young, 18 to 34, middle aged, 34 to 54, and old people, 54, uh, 55 or higher. For gender, we picked female and male categories. And for education, Facebook offers 13 different education level categories. We group them into two categories, non-college, college, and there's also an unspecified category under education level. We also picked that one because our experience is that unspecified category for uh, these, these are people for which Facebook doesn't have education data. That category includes a high number of uh, non-college voters as well. Okay, in these studies, we compare two ways of targeting to no targeting. For first, in first campaign, we just didn't use any targets. In the second campaign, we targeted demographic groups separately. And finally, in the third campaign, we targeted crossings of subgroups of these demographic groups. I will just delve into more detail in a bit. Very important to note that across all of these campaigns, we assigned the same budget. It is 36 pounds daily budget for each campaign so that we can have comparability across campaigns. Okay, so you see the design of our first campaign. We didn't use any targets at all. And for that reason, we assigned the entire budget of campaign, that is 36 pounds to one single ad set. The second campaign, this is the campaign in which you use single targeting. We called it single targeting because each demographic groups, that is each, each uh, categories of demographic groups are targeted separately. One ad set for female, one ad set for male, one ad set for young, be it female or male and so on. Now, when you list it like this, there are eight different groups. And for that reason, we divide 36 into eight and we assigned four and a half pounds per ad set. And finally, when we used cross-targeting, uh, overall we had 18 groups. That's because our first ad set targeted female who are young and who are non-college, crossing of three demographic categories. Second one targeted male, young, and non-college. And in that way, we formed an exhaustive, li ex exhaustive list of all possible, all potential crossings of uh, subgroups of our demographic categories. Since there are 18 different, uh, 18 different categories here, we divided 36 pounds into 18 and we assigned two pounds per ad set. Let's see our results. First of all, on the right, you see population benchmark built on census data. And on the left, uh, our results from no targeting, single targeting and cross targeting are listed. What you see here is that the more targeting we use, the closer we get to the population benchmark. Although we, not, we cannot always catch the population benchmark. For example, in the UK, 
as we have shown, when we didn't use any targeting, young people, people at between the age of 18 to 34, represented only 5% per, uh, 5 of our sample. By using cross-targeting, we could increase this to 11%. In Turkey and Spain, though, we could come even more closer to population benchmarks. For example, in Spain, 22% of the population is young. We could uh, reach 18%. Uh, we could uh, create a sample in which 18% was young. We were successful with gender as well. Female, when we use cross-targeting, basically the proportion of female came very close to population benchmarks. Cross-targeting increased uh, proportion pop, uh, of, of uh, non-college voters in our samples as well, although we couldn't come very close to population benchmarks. So to sum up, the lesson here is that the more targeting you use, the closer you get to the population benchmark. There's a catch though. The catch is that the more targeting you use, the, costly, the more costly it is for you to recreate participants. Since we use same budget, same amount of money across all advertisement, all studies, we will look at the number of participants in each country. As you see in UK, without using any targeting, we nearly recruited two times more participants compared to cross-targeting. This difference though got smaller and smaller in Turkey and Spain. This is because our optimization algorithm, our Facebook pixel, was getting was being more trained, more successful at, at uh, targeting even with cross targeting group, more tar uh, successful at reaching people who will complete our surveys. Okay. Now, <clears throat> what we have shown here is that when you use targeting, you can just get more successful results. Here I show you another result from our sample in Turkey, a different sample in Turkey, in which this time we have actually been successful to reach population distribution with respect to the proportion of college voters. We didn't use any college targeting in this one. We just targeted non-college voters. And as a result, only 20% of our sample was college voters. It was same with the population. On the other hand, as you see, there are still differences with respect to high school graduates. Now, in this case, if population uh, statistics, is, if descriptive statistics are important to you, you can also use post stratification weighting. Of course, this is what we did in this study based on census data. We use post stratification weights. And as a result, we could basically replicate, uh, we, could we could catch population uh, proportion through our weighted data. This is what we did when descriptive, catching descriptive statistics was really important for us. Okay. Now, let's do a brief practice. We want to show you how you can use uh, Facebook targeting in, in, in practice. Now, let's assume that I want to control the distribution of gender and age among my participants using cross-targeting. We want to keep it simple. Gender, two categories, female and male. Age, two categories, young and old. OK. Since we are using cross-targeting, we will create four separate ad sets. We just crossed all of these subcategories under our demographic categories. Ad set one, male and young. Ad set two, male and old. It said three female and young, and it said four female and old. I will assign each of these ad sets equal budget, and I will use the same ad for each of these ad sets. So, how can we do that? Okay. Okay. At the moment, you are seeing Facebook Advertisement Manager, my Facebook Advertisement Manager account. I had just introduced how Facebook Advertisement Manager account looks like, so I will not go through the detail. There's a green Create button here. Let's click on that green Create button, and an easy setup tool will be open for us. We want to create a conversion campaign. I selected Conversion. Okay, now you can choose a name for your conversion campaign. 
uh, our ad doesn't fall under special ad categories. We are not using a political image. I don't want to use campaign budget optimization. I want to keep my ad set separate. If I choose campaign budget optimization, Facebook will decide which ad set is working, working better for me and assign resources to that. I don't want that. I want to keep them separate. So this is, we made our choices at the uh, campaign level. Let's go to ad set level. Again, enter the ad set here. We want to target young and male. We want this ad set to target young and male people. Now, we will direct people to Qualtrics. That's why we have picked website here. If you remember, last week we had created conversion event, which was Vive Content. This is where you choose conversion events. Since we created last week a Vive Content event, that is whoever sees Vive's our uh, web page, WordPress web page, will be counted as an event. Since we had created that last week, we can choose Vive Content as an active event here. And again, you need to do that only once. Once you created those events, uh, you can create as many campaigns as you want in different times. I chose my conversion event. And then I will choose budget and schedule at the ad set level. Since I will create four different ones and I want, to, I want them to equally share, I will divide 20 into four. It's five, I assign five pounds. I will choose a start date for my ad set here. Let's start it on 25 because there will be a review process in between. Facebook will review my ad set. I want all of my ads to start at the same time. Facebook is telling me that I can retarget my past uh, users. I don't want that. I want to create new, I want to reach new people. Here is the crucial place. Here is where you make choices. This is young and female, young and male. So what I will do here is to limit to people between 18 and 44. Now, very important, if you look at here, you see that there's an estimated audience size. Facebook is telling me that around 30 million people falls under this category in the UK. I also want to limit my uh, advertisement set to men. So the audience size went back to, went down to 15 million. It's important that you, you keep an eye on the audience size. It's very small audience sizes might be bad for the performance of your ad set might increase prices so you wouldn't want a uh, hundred thousand audience size or, or at least for representatives purposes it might be difficult to recruit people now here detailed targeting options are available so for example if i wanted to include education i would choose it here i would say bros demographics education education level and let's pick high school graduates I didn't pick another one. And then these are some other details you can go through. And finally, I click on advertisement or I could just go next. And this is where I will create the advertisement. Let's pick the page through which we want to publish our advertisement. We had discussed this last week. You can go our recording or slides. I pick the Facebook page. You will choose the image. One of the images we use in the past, I pick the image. Once you write the enter the text here, basically it's, it is all it takes. You also need to enter your Qualtrics URL here, and then this particular ad is ready. But of course, we are not just going to publish because we need to create three more ad sets. We need to create one more ad set for young female, and for old male and all female. So what we will do is we can just duplicate this ad set. Existing campaign, new conversion campaigns. We are just duplicating what we have. We are doing this because we will use the same advertisement anyway. We don't need to create the same advertisement again and again and then click on it, basically just change the settings here, and here you go. 
young female and you added uh, details at details here and and that's all it takes basically once you create a two more sets you will just publish okay so now of course this is this is a bit more packed but i hope uh, it, it was clear for you if not you can just go back to the slides uh, to to see the process of course the more adverb ad sets you create the process will get will get a bit longer uh, to make it simple you can use facebook uh, api uh, face and in that sense you can just create if, if you will create if you are planning to create like a hundred ad sets maybe it's a good idea for you to go check and to try to do that through facebook api in a, in a shorter time otherwise this interface will be easy and enough for you okay uh now very brief points before uh, i leave it to anya because we also run out of time you can use political targets uh, we use political targets in two different ways either directly or indirectly you can just target political leaders supporters of political leaders or you can target uh, newspaper organizations media organizations that you know to be affiliated closely affiliated with political leaders now one thing is that you should keep in mind it's not always very successful political targets in our case without political targets like uh, we could own without political targets conservative voters in our samples were very low for example we use targets to increase the proportion of conservative voters but still they were most of the time not enough um, performance and available categories will change a lot across countries in advanced democratic countries you can find many uh, political many options to use political targets in in other countries you will not have that many options using political targets you might just get strong partisans you need to be careful about that because you you might not want to have that position if you are doing treatments because then strong partisans might be impervious to your experimental treatments and also facebook will uh, has announced that it will limit the use of direct political targeting you might not be able to target political leaders and parties after after uh, the new year but you can still use i believe indirect political targeting you can still target uh, people who have shown an interest in in very partisan media i guess that will be the way to do political targeting soon so lessons so far targeting is good more targeting you get better samples but it will increase costs. Okay, uh, I will just finish my session here and Anya will continue. Thank you very much, uh, I could. Uh, I left a few questions for you in the Q and A, uh, okay. so <laughs> I'm handing over uh, that chat. Keep keep them coming, guys. Uh, it's it's also helpful for us to see kind of what you're interested in. Uh, so what I will do now is, as I could was explaining, when you work with the Facebook Ads Manager, there's three levels, right? So we had the campaigns, and we focused on that last week. Now, um, I could was talking about the ad set, which is you know the crucial part where you um, set up your targeting and then the final the lowest level is the ad content and so uh, we also did a bit of research in trying to understand how potentially the ad content might affect what kind of samples you're getting so just to show you again um uh ours ad can you just uh oh, i was thinking questions sorry yes um, so this, we, I, we actually showed you this advertisement last week already. So uh, this is kind of, you know, how typically uh, the ads that researchers use look like. Um, so you have some picture uh, and you have some text associated to it. And uh, so what we're interested in here is how the combination of text image and also incentives might affect your uh, recruitment strategy and we as you saw you know here in this very simple um advertisement we did not offer any incentives but we already had some questions about this last week and we do see that studies using this uh use incentives so we of course wanted to know how incentives 
affect this process as well. So first, uh, just quickly kind of how did we set up our study and then I will go into detail about these three dimensions that we varied. So this is a separate survey that we conducted also in Turkey um, in May this year. And in this particular study where we ran um, you know, a substantive survey, we were interested in voters of the ruling party. Yeah? This is 50% of the population, so it's hardly kind of like a minority group, but it's actually like, you know, partly like a hard to reach uh, um, population because uh, if you don't do anything, you get only about you know 10 percent um of, of this group uh, so we needed kind of you know we, we really were targeting them and we were only just interested in them yeah and that might be like you know you see like you know some people asking about specific ethnic groups and so on so the way we set this up is we use conversion which is you know i hope you do take that away that's the best way of using campaigns. And then in terms of targeting, we use cross targets, age, education, and gender, just given what we have found in the other study, right? That's the best way to set things up. And then what we did is we designed 11 different advertisements that we released at the same time. Uh, so which, which means that uh, Facebook users in Turkey that were you know, kind of scrolling through their Facebook in May 2021 uh, saw these different advertisements that were all associated uh, to us. And it's then kind of up to them to click on it. Yeah. So it, that's part of it, right? It's this self-selection mechanism. What do they feel most attracted to? What do they find most interesting? What we then did is we collected data until we had 250 regime voters uh, by each of the advertisement and then we compared them. So let's look at the dimensions. So as I mentioned, incentive is something that people ask us a lot about. Um, so we wanted to see how this works, uh, what's the effect of incentives. Um, a lot of researchers on low budget use no incentives, and we have used that, you know, in that first study where we compared campaigns and targeting, um, and it works actually relatively well, right? So, uh, and, you know, a lot of people don't have the money to do any payments. Then we had three uh, kind of conditions where we use some form of material incentive. First, we use a direct payment. And here we used a, a supermarket voucher that was worth about seven uh, Turkish lira. It's a relatively small amount, uh, but given that you know Turkey is let's say a middle income country, um, uh, you know uh, that's still an option. Um, and the you know kind of similar setup with a low lottery where we use the same supermarket vouchers but just a higher value, and then it was a lottery, so people could win one of seventy. And, you know, because some people ask about how did you actually pay people uh, in that case, uh, we teamed up with that supermarket and we sent them uh, a text message with the voucher that they could then just use for their next purchase. Um, and then we also used a high lottery option where we had one iPad worth 300 pounds that could be won. And the iPad is an interesting one because we've seen that actually used quite a lot in the literature. So several studies that have recruited participants through Facebook have done exactly this because you know it's a it's a global brand you know it's a it's a kind of luxury good seems desirable. So we also wanted to know kind of how that high lottery might work. Okay, as you see, kind of if you maybe do some of the calculations, the expected utility in any of the material incentive uh, conditions is actually the same. It's about uh, 60p. Yeah, so we kept that constant uh, to make sure that it is comparable. So um, just to show you how these advertisements looked like, so um, we used the pictures of the incentives, so the iPad or the you know kind of symbol of the supermarket, and then the information about you know get a low payment or win a slightly higher payment uh, voucher from the supermarket. This is how the um, ad looked like. So looking at our second dimension, um, uh, we try to see how the text we're using might impact who you're recruiting and how you're recruiting. So we, all, we have this vague frame uh, that we already used in our first study, which is very simply just, would you like to participate in our survey? Research from the University of Glasgow want to hear your opinions, okay? Uh, this is, again, something that is used a lot. The vague frame, um, is has its advantages because uh, it you know it doesn't really speak directly to like a particular topic and therefore you might have higher chances of recruiting people of like more general interest. 
uh, rather than our second option, which is the political frame, where we kind of told them what the survey is clearly about. So we, we said, you know, we are interested in like, you know, current political issues in Turkey. Um, and that might be, you know, kind of a good idea because you think, well, I mean, I want to, their, you know, you know, political opinions. Um, so therefore I should mention this. However, if you do that, there's also a risk that you might kind of zoom too quickly in um, to uh, just get people who are interested in politics, which might, you might not want to do, right? So we had these two versions of the text, one very vague and one clearly uh, highlighting already the political nature of the survey. And then lastly, we had the image uh, that we varied. So we used a neutral image um, just as a kind of base condition uh, showing the microphones that I already showed you. Um, some people in uh, medical research have shown that human photos sometimes can be more effective in, um, in attracting participants. Uh, and even like looking at like emotions, like if you see a happy person, you're more likely to participate or react to uh, an online campaign and so on. So we wanted to know whether using human photos might help. Um, then, uh, as you already saw, we used the uh, material incentives as well. And then lastly, because as I said, in that particular study, we wanted to target the group that votes for the ruling party. So we used also an image of uh, President Erdogan uh, to kind of you know, correspond to that target group, okay? Uh, so just to show you some of the examples here. So we used, uh, you know, kind of the, uh, you know, human pictures, um, male and female. And um, these pictures uh, we had to pay for. So there were also some questions about this last week. If you use human pictures, it's usually more expensive. Uh, so that is something also to bear in mind. And then just lastly, also to show you kind of, you know, these political content, uh, I mean, that's in Turkish, so some of you might be able to read it, but this is kind of the text mentioning politics and also like very clearly drawing your attention to um, Erdogan um, as a political figure, okay? So showing you the results now of these different things. So what we've done is uh, we run these different ads where we combined also different things. And what we basically see is that if you use the political image of Erdogan, um, and in combination also with uh, a political image, you know, things went really quickly. So it's basically that picture, the image that really drove, um, uh, you know, kind of people that support the um, AKP uh, to our survey and the costs per, you know, completed survey were really low. The cost that you see here in the last column, um, that's basically the cost overall, right? So it's the cost that we have to pay to uh, Facebook for the advertisement, but also taking into account that we had, you know, like low, the payments for the supermarket vouchers or that we had to purchase an iPad, right? Um, so what you see here is, uh, interestingly, when you look at incentives, um, it's actually quite good to use more low paid incentives. So either a low lottery or direct payment, that's much better than using a high lottery. Yeah. So if you do the high lottery, like iPad, that will cost you actually overall more. Yeah. Um, it's not as quick as using these low payments, um, as you see, and the, the, the speed and how quickly you recruit people that really affects your costs. Okay. Uh, so the payment here seems to, to really uh, matter. When it comes uh, to kind of the image, what we also see, if you just look at kind of the no incentive conditions where we kind of varied uh, the, the image very much, um, if you use a, a kind of neutral image of the microphones, that's actually a bit cheaper and a bit better than if, if you use humans. So when it comes to social science research, it doesn't seem to help to use human pictures which is also in a way an advantage because you do need to purchase them. Uh, so in terms of image, um, it seems that uh, using you know, neutral pictures is perfectly fine. You do not need to use uh, human pictures. When we look at the text, um, there's no clear pattern. Yeah? So neither the political nor the vague uh, seems to matter very much here, um, but I will come back to this because the text does affect your sample. So looking at this next then, um, uh, what this table shows you is basically the comparison of key demographics uh, for the different ads that we had. 
And compared to our population, the population here is um, the supporters of the ruling party, which was the target group, right? That's the people we wanted to interview. So the first gray line gives us like, that's basically our benchmark. And then you see uh, how things uh, kind of uh, played out with the different advertisement. And there's a lot going on here. You see that some of the advertisements are really off. So for example, if you look at that first one, yeah, this is the, the way we sort things here is by price. So higher uh, rows are the cheaper ones, while the lower ones are overall the more expensive um, advertisements and so on. So this first one that was really cheap um, gave us, you know, not a very good sample in a way, right? So we have way too few women um, and also, you know, still too many kind of more educated people. While if you move to the kind of next four rows where we're looking at this low payments, whether this is a lottery or direct payment, um, actually the balance is much better. So we have, you know, kind of in terms of gender, it's kind of closer to what we expect or also in terms of age, um, and education, yeah. Interesting, if you look at the um, uh, high lottery here, you see that this really attracted mainly younger people. So suddenly we have like over 50% of our sample is young, which, you know, is too much. And that's probably because they're really attracted to that price. So that's also something to bear in mind, right? If you do set incentives, it will maybe, you know, that will be attractive for some people, but not for others. Yeah, And so this might affect who will end up in your sample. And then also lastly, because this was a kind of political targeting here in a way, um, our advertisement also had massive effects on kind of the political characteristics of the different samples. So this, this kind of, you know, in your face, this is Erdogan and we're interested in Erdogan, um, that created, you know, a sample that was basically super interested in politics and it was really strongly partisan, much more than um, the, our, uh, you know, reference point here. Um, if you move to the kind of low payment, uh, um, uh, you know, options, they're much better balanced again. They're much closer to what we would expect. Yeah. So political interest is much lower because people might have just been attracted to, a, you know, kind of take our survey because they get like a low payment or, you know, they win a supermarket voucher. Uh, and so therefore that is actually worked much better. So just to, and, and also, sorry, I'm not uh, showing this, but we did actually look in whether our samples affected our survey experiment and the treatment, and there is some effects here, which is mainly because some of these uh, populations are just way too partisan and way too political. And we do need to bear that in mind that it might actually affect your experimental results as well if you have built this in. So just to kind of summarize, uh, also you know, running out of time a bit. Um, so advertisement content does matter. And uh, it, um, it seems based on what we found in this study is that if you offer low material interest, can actually produce cheaper and more representative samples. Um, political images, um, you know, they're really great at kind of drawing attention. And so you get maybe quicker. Uh, and that probably, you know, also, I mean, it would be interesting to see what Stefan has to say about this also next week about using images of your target group. Um, in our case, it really helped to draw the attention and get the right people in, but it created a lot of imbalances in terms of demographics um, and, political um, uh, characteristics and so on, yeah. The advertisement text, as far as we can see, doesn't seem to be too influential. I think people are really mainly drawn to the picture and the uh, incentive, so they might not even read the text very carefully. Okay, so this was actually what we wanted to cover today. Uh, I already hinted at a few points and also in the Q&A uh, to uh, our next session, which is a really nice you know, continuation of our discussion today. Um, and uh, in next session, Stefan uh, Perchke from Jesus will focus on these hard to reach populations. Um, and uh, here again, you know, he's, he's talking about targeting um, and also uh, the recruitment of highly dispersed populations. So Stefan has done some fantastic work on migrants, for example. Um, and he's presenting some of that kind of insights and research that he's uh, been doing. So that's the session uh, for today and uh, very much also looking forward uh, to next week and hopefully you're gonna join us for this. Um, so uh, that's, if you have any questions or comments, do I can, us. Sorry, I can briefly go through some of questions that are asked so far. 
uh, and we will respond all questions even even if not during the session i will then separately send an email to respond all of the questions raised here so one question is about how do we ensure not to collect duplicated answers and another question is about whether we can precisely target the same people that you already recruited in a past ad now similar questions basically if you if someone has interacted with your page you can just create a custom audience on Facebook, which will record the data of everyone that, that interacted with your page or ads in the past. Based on that data, you can target people who had already interacted with your page, or you can tell Facebook to exclude people who already interacted with your page. So you can do both of those things. You just need to create a custom audience uh, from the ad set section. Um, okay. Yes, you can use different budgets for different ad sets if, if their proportion is uh, different in the population. I think uh, I, I think that's the right thing. We would suggest you to adjust your budgets based on uh, population characteristics. Uh, what is the chance that the same person is exposed to multiple ads created uh, for the same target? I, I think that you can just tell Facebook to uh, show an ad only for uh, only for once, but I am not sure about that. Uh, and for uh, ethical board approval, we got approval ethical board approval from uh, University of Glasgow, of course, for uh, our advertisement campaign. They didn't create a problem with respect to that issue. Uh, an important issue, all of your ads, when you create them, goes through an approval process. Now, uh, if you don't use any political images, approval process is easier, of course. If uh, And also, if you are a more experienced advertiser, if you have a, uh, a advertisement account that has been used again and again, it, uh, approval process is uh, smoother, easier. Now, if you are using political images, then you need to get permission to uh, in, in that country. In our case, we didn't declare our ad as special ad. We didn't know that. So our political ad, the image that you saw here, was actually eventually rejected by Facebook. But we had already uh, collected data for that. So basically, if you will use a similar image, if we want to use the similar image next time, we would just uh, declare it as special ad category. And it would go through a review process in, in through human review process uh, in, in through Facebook. Uh, but I don't think we will use political images given that incentives uh, return better results. Uh, yeah, yeah, there are several more like, questions, but I, I will uh, go to them. I'm yeah. trying to like answer some of the questions uh, uh, still. Uh, so yeah, we might have to uh, still go uh, through this um, and uh, and just uh, yeah. I mean, I was uh, maybe uh, I could. Did you answer the the IP Qualtrics one? Uh, how do we ensure not to collect duplicated answers when IP is not available? Uh, again, what you can do here is to tell Facebook not to show your advertisements to same people, and in that sense, uh, I think that's the best you can do. Just just to tell Facebook not to show uh, your advertisement to the same people again. Uh, yes, a apart from that, you will need to rely on Qualtrics uh, IP, IP uh, addresses in Qualtrics, or you will need to tell Qualtrics to uh, not allow uh, bullet stuffing. Yeah. Uh, just to, to also, uh, Ali had a question about uh, ethics. Uh, I did address this briefly last week. Uh, you know, when we, we submitted all the different ads and all of all of this study, for example, uh, in, in the different content and the different incentives and so on, to our ethics board at the University of, uh, of Glasgow, um, and uh, we did not have any issues in, in kind of you know, getting ethical approval, we have to justify what's the, you know, kind of purpose of this research project and so on. Uh, but yeah, we do, I, I would definitely recommend that uh, you include the, you know, kind of a picture of your ad uh, in your ethical approval, how it will look like the picture you use, the, you know, the text it has and so on, because I do think it's an important information that probably, you know, needs to be uh, uh, assessed. Yeah, I hope that answers your question. Um, okay, there's a really long one by uh, Mailu. I don't know whether you read this, I could, but... Uh, um, 
Well, very good questions regarding the first one. Of course, I mean, we didn't conduct a research on that one. It was an issue we were considering as well. The title and design of your Facebook page would, I, I guess, affect response rates. And in the last week, for example, we had discussed how our expectation was that using a university page would have a different result compared to using a, your own Facebook page. Uh, but we haven't conducted systematic research in that one on that one. Yeah. And then a the second question. Uh, absolutely. Uh, you get all this information uh, in, um, you know, maybe we should have actually shown kind of once you run uh, uh, the ads that you actually get a lot of information from Facebook about how many people have seen your ad, how many people have clicked on it. Uh, so you get all this information uh, from Facebook, uh, you know, uh, directly. And that's that's important information. And we usually also report this, like what's the click through rate, which means, you know, people have who have seen the ad and who clicked on it. Or in, um, when it comes to, um, you know, conversion, how many success, like, you know, kind of um, how many successful events are there that people actually complete the task that you give them, which is to complete your survey. Yeah. And then the third question, uh, we do see differences in terms of what people see in the ad, right? So I just showed you um, the ad that, you know, advertised the, the, the iPad was basically super successful with younger people, um, which you might expect. Uh, so one possi possibility is probably might be to kind of combine the two insights we presented today, right? So use um, Facebook targeting. So targeting specific groups. So you want to, for example, increase um, your uptake by younger people. And then just for that group of younger people, you might use the iPad to attract them, yeah, which you don't need for older people because they're not that interested in it. Uh, so that's probably also, uh, you know, kind of really maximizing uh, the insights that we have generated with our research here uh, to combine targeting and add content and, and even match uh, the two much better um, because in our target study we kept the ad constant right we used always the same very blunt uh, vague no incentive just microphone ad uh, but it might be better to actually um, uh, use another ad per per ad set yeah um, okay so I hope that that's more or less all the different uh, questions that you had uh, do email us if you have any other questions and um, uh, as we did last week, we will publish this uh, video on YouTube and uh, let you know once it's available and we will also make the slides available. Um, and uh, yeah, very much looking forward to seeing you next week and, um, and uh, hearing more about uh, Stefan's exciting research. Thank you very much and uh, have a nice day, evening or whatever the time is wherever you are. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.